Hey everybody, this is Nick here and welcome to my channel. It is getting a little bit chilly here as we're heading into the winter and I thought it'd be a good time to remind you guys some tips and some new information on how to actually maximize your battery efficiency to get the most out of your charge during these winter months. If you follow this channel, I actually took my Tesla Model Y into uh, Mammoth Lake, California. It's basically like a normal winter for um, those of you in the northern part of the United States that have uh, harsh winters. I actually got to experience firsthand what it's like to actually drive this car and use it daily in extreme cold conditions. We're talking about snowfall, icing conditions, and well below uh, freezing temperatures. You can find the link to that fun video right here. For our first tip, I actually wanna share something that's not very well known, and that is how to set your driving conditions to make the most efficiency out of your heat pump. Now electric heating is done in two ways. There is a direct induction method and the other method is with a heat pump. And the way a heat pump works is actually really fascinating because it pulls heat from the cold air outside. But if you have it in chill mode, the battery is sort of reserving like memory RAM on a computer and allocates more of the resources to actually heating the cabin. And this leads to a more battery efficient method of heating the cabin in very cold conditions, which will lead to better battery performance. The second tip, which is reduce your driving speeds. When you double your speed, you actually amplify the amount of energy it takes by a factor of four. There is actually a law that was passed in the United States in 1974, which limited the highway speeds from 65 miles per hour down to 55 miles per hour. And this was directly due to an energy crisis. And they were fully aware that if they reduce the speed down to 55 miles per hour, they would save a considerable amount of gasoline. And this is why the law was put into effect. So that kind of weighs in here, right? This next tip is a pretty huge tip. Precondition the battery before you start driving. On a cold day, when you get into your car and it's been unplugged, that battery is sitting at the ambient temperature. Unless it's extremely cold, then the actual battery is uh, being used to keep the battery heated so it doesn't freeze. When the car is put into the wall, all the energy is coming from the grid into the vehicle to heat the cabin and to heat the battery rather than the battery having to do all that work in its own. This next tip is also a really important one. When you are setting the climate controls in winter conditions for the cabin, you wanna maximize what is the best way of getting heat into your body. And that's actually not using uh, the ambient air temperature. You could still have it on, but the most efficient way is to use the seat warmers and the steering wheel heater. That will actually transfer heat the best and uh, it's the least amount of energy to actually heat up the seat, to heat up the steering wheel, than it is to uh, use the heat pump to change the air around the Tesla, especially with those glass wall roofs and all the windows that are in a car. Uh, that takes a lot of energy. This next part is for extreme cold conditions and this applies to snow, icing and in general below freezing conditions. The first one is to put your windshield wipers into service mode. I learned this one the hard way last winter. I actually tore through my windshield wipers. They basically don't even function properly. They just need to be replaced. When you put your windshield wipers into service mode, it actually lifts the wiper blades uh, about a quarter of the way up to the windshield and it prevents it from getting into a condition where it's iced over. And it also prevents it from actuating uh, without you wanting it to. The other tip is to turn off the automatic folding mirrors. I had this on when I was in icy conditions. I don't think that part of the car got that icy and it was actually able to overcome the ice buildup but I was cringing the entire time when that happened because I was like, oh my gosh, the motors in those mirrors are like trying to fight off the ice. It was a mistake. I had totally forgot about it. Just make sure you have auto folding mirrors turned off to prevent an icing condition. All right, here's another one. This is the Achilles heel of a Tesla in the icy conditions that you might experience. And that is these frameless windows. Oh boy, um, that comes down when you open the door. And you can imagine that this gets icy. Sometimes these doors just might not open and that actually did happen 
a couple times, and that's why it's so important to use the defrost mode. That does use a ton of energy, but that's just uh, something you have to consider. This is really what's causing all the sound cancellation inside the car, is this nice seal of this rubber part on the door frame. It's up here, it's everywhere around this door. Uh, that's everything in this car. And that needs to be uh, really considered in icy conditions. Uh, another thing is to really clean this as much as you can. Um, take a damp, you know, sponge or something, just with water and kind of go over it to take the dust off of here. Rehydrate um, this this uh, rubber sealant around here because this is what's going to keep the integrity of uh, your car's sound cancellation when you're inside of it. Um, take good care of this. Around the timing of me making this video, on November 19th, Tesla released an update which is perfect for cold weather. This is the update 2024.44.3. It just got released to my car yesterday and it includes specifically cold weather improvements. Battery preconditioning has been improved for better supercharging performance as well as better automatic windshield defogging during and after supercharging. And because this was such a big update, they included this really important part here in the other section. When you plug in the DC fast charger cable and the battery is too cold for fast charging, an estimated remaining battery heating time is displayed, indicating when charging can start. And the most important one here, in my opinion, based on my experience, you can now heat your charge port in case your charge cable is frozen stuck, going to controls, service, and then charge port heater. And this is huge because this is how I actually had to wait five minutes and luckily the sun was out and it was kind of hitting the charge port side. I was able to have the ice around the charge port melt enough for it to open up and let me charge. But now this is a feature that you can activate from your car and that also proves that there are heating elements around the charge port. I'm not really sure why this wasn't included in the past, but now it is. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe to see more videos like this, and I will see you next time.